Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Great to see so many of you. Um, let me see if there are still people joining. Yes, there are. Um, my name is Iris. Maybe you have been to previous sessions of Digital UCG and you are a little bit familiar of um, what I'm going to say now. But for the ones that um, just jumped in and this is their first session joining, my name is Iris and today I'm here with Marike, who is my colleague, and with Dr. Bettina van Hoven and she's our Academic Director of Education. Now she will tell you a little bit more about our education at UCG and we are going to try to make this session a little bit interactive. So um, please keep behind, please stay behind your screen and um, we will tell you what to do next. Now, if you have any questions, you can always put them in the chat box. That's why Marika and I are here. We will monitor the chat box and um, try to answer all of your questions as best as we can. The session is being recorded. So if you want to rewatch any of the sessions um, later next week, we will try to um, have them up and running so you can rewatch any session that you'd like. Um, we have a lot of participants. That's so great to see. Um, while people are still joining, um, we can actually, I'm, I'm wondering about you all. So um, please let us know where you're from and where you're joining from in the world. I'd love to see that in the chat box. We're here located in the Netherlands. So it is four o'clock here, but I also know that in previous sessions, people were joining from all over the world. So I can imagine that it's a different time zone where you're located. So good morning or good evening or good day, wherever you are, of course. I can see Germany, Munich, the Netherlands, Greek living in the Netherlands, California. Oh my goodness, you're from everywhere. That is awesome to see. Hamburg and some China, Kenya, Australia. Belgium, Hamburg, the Alps, Italy, Italy, Wageningen, um, Germany, Dresden, France, Switzerland. Oh, it's so great to have you all here and to, it kind of already shows you what kind of an international co community we already have at UCG. So this is kind of a little taste of what you can expect at UCG. Now, I have talked enough and I'm going to hand the floor over to Bettina. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Iris. I just see a question by Tom here. Is the session recorded? Um, yes, it is. But um, still, don't sleep. It's only 11 p.m. where you are. Plus, you're a student. Um, so welcome again uh, from me as well. I will talk to you mostly today about um, what you can expect in your first year. But because for me, the first year isn't really kind of independent from the entire education that you will receive in our liberal arts and sciences program. I'm also going to make like a few kind of detours and try and make some connections throughout the program. Um, but before I do that, I was curious, not just where you're from, but also what three words you associate with UCG um, at the moment. I know that some of you already know something from previous um, video meets. Uh, maybe you found some stuff online or talked some to some people. But if you can either scan in this QR code with your phone that will take you to the website um, or just put in the web address and you can do that on your laptop or in your phone and then you can put up to three words. And what this will do it is uh, it will create a word cloud. Maybe you've done this already um, on other occasions. This is, I think, sometimes used in events or in school as well. And then we can see what you as a group come up with. Um, what is your imagination of UCG right now? Um, one of those could be international because we just saw that in the chat. And indeed, we have at this time 85% international students are from outside the Netherlands and usually it's around 60 or 65% but I would like to hear other words as well. Can we already see something um, Iris? Is a word cloud forming? Oh there it is. Exciting and it's growing into a storm possibly 
freedom, I see. International, yeah, that was an easy one. Freedom and imagination, I love these keywords. Interdisciplinary, multifaceted, growth, growth. Yeah, nice one, two options. So you see that the words that are used more often, they appear on the screen as larger words or thicker words, creativity, uh, arts, intensive, yeah, choice, development, open-mindedness, multicultural. I think you guys are ready. Flexibility. Let's just give it a few more seconds. If you have just joined, um, we are just inviting you to give us a few words that you associate with UCG at the time. I don't see any more movement in the screen here. Um, yeah, this is great. I think you've been well informed. Uh, I'm wondering what else I will have to offer um, for you today. Iris, can we go back to the presentation so I can move on in the slides? Thank you. Um, don't think we have the slides yet. Yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah, so um, I, I just thought today about this quote that I saw. Um, I, I searched for some quotes by people who didn't take a single degree program, like a monodisciplinary degree program, but who did a liberal arts and sciences program and who talked afterwards when they already had pursued a career about how this came in useful. And uh, I thought this might be a nice one to start with. So the quote is from someone, uh, a CEO at American Express. This is the, uh, the equivalent of the visa credit card, uh, Kenneth Cheneau. Um, and he says, to operate in this business environment, you can't just be a one-trick pony. And I'll ask them, and this is the applicants to this company, what are some of the things you have done that you think were out of your comfort zone? People have different ways of talking about their comfort zone, but what you can start to glean is from an intellectual standpoint, how open were they to different ideas and views? Now, isn't that interesting that in a job interview, you wouldn't necessarily be asked about all those courses that you took and what you specialize in, something about economics, but about those kind of odd things that, that we saw in the word cloud as well, the choices that you made that maybe fall outside of this narrow definition. And so I put a, um, it's a is it called a kaleidoscope, these, these things that you can get as a kid and you turn them around and it has these fragments that are shifting and it is a kaleidoscope, right? And and so you get this different image of what essentially is the same as you turn this around. And I think this is what you are when you come to UCG. So you are not you are the multiple trick pony, and uh, and maybe you're already a little bit the multiple trick pony, just judging by what you came up with in the word cloud and that you chose to come to this session. Um, and so how I want to explain a little bit. Um, the kind of pony that you'll become at UCG is by starting uh, not with your first week, like that what we usually do in this presentation, but to start a little bit further ahead in the program, and that is with the project. And I think it fits really nicely with some of your expectations, because um, what I'll show you in a moment is um, an explanation of a year one project that we did um, the past two years and also this year again, and it's a project that is a collaboration between a researcher, a social scientist, and uh, an arts group. Uh, the group is called the Peer Group, and it addresses um, a kind of regional topic, and that is the Wadden Sea area. Um, and so I will show you in a moment um, the link to this video, and so then you can click on the link um, on, in your own screen, and then we'll watch the first um, kind of six or seven minutes. And then I will pull out a few things from this video that relate to our program and so that you can understand uh, what kind of vision we're actually pursuing here. Oh no, someone already left the session. Uh, I hope it's, it's for technical reasons. So stick with us. Um, 
So here is the video. The project is called Amphidrome. And you can just hover on it with your mouse. And when you click on it, it opens um, a new window. Iris also kindly posted the link in the chat. And so if you um, open up in a separate window so you don't lose our connection, you can also hear me when we come back. I'm also opening the video uh, now. And so we can watch the first six minutes or so together, but independently. And then we'll come back here uh, in the black. So I'll switch off my mic now and uh, invite you to start watching the video Amphidrome.
so uh, I hope you can all hear me. Um, I think we are now at around um, six or seven minutes. If you switched on the video at the same time as me, then you are now at, uh, on the website of Amphidrome looking at some examples uh, that the students made to present um, their findings. Uh, so you can switch off the video and return to the um, Blackboard room again. I uh, hope you're all back. I'm going to move on to the previous slide very briefly. Um, so I, I'm, I want to explain now in the next uh, um, few minutes uh, how we kind of get you to work in this project through our program, especially in year one. And so I think you can see here already that we are not preparing you to just do this one thing and that we are doing precisely what it says in the quote here to try and expand, not get you out of your comfort zone, but maybe expand your comfort zone. And uh, we do that by introducing different skills to you um, and also have you practice. Uh, so I see that there's something in the chat now. I don't know, Iris and Marike, would you like me to respond to the chat? as I go along or save it for the end. There's a question on other examples of first year projects. Yeah, so I will respond <laughs> as I go along. Um, so there is usually about six or seven projects that we offer in the first year. And off the top of my head, I think we have a project this year about uh, disinformation. We have a project about human animal relationships. Um, we have a project about m international migration uh, issues. Um, well, you can see actually, if you watch the news at all, that all of these are pretty um, kind of current issues. So they are all examples of complex issues that we are uh, facing um, as we speak actually. Um, I think we have a project about sustainable food as well. Um, and we have a project about kind of storytelling. So it's about how you translate these complicated global issues like migration, but also maybe post-colonialism or gender or something like grief or loss. How can you translate it to different audiences. And in this project is about translating it to the audience that is children. And so students do this by writing uh, children's stories. Um, so those are a few examples. And, and after this presentation, um, I will still hang out in the chat. And so I can answer some more questions. So, um, so now I go back to this original uh, kind of presentation about year one. Um, but I want you to keep, keep in mind what we just heard about the project and the one trick pony as I go through this overview of the schedule and talk a little bit about the research skills line and also how you can organize your program and, and how you can help get help in making some of these choices. So what you see here is an overview of the entire program throughout year one, two and three. And you see that the focus is shifting a little bit throughout your time here at UCG, where, while, where in year one, actually in year one is the, the most focus on the academic core, because we want to help you lay a foundation in the liberal arts and sciences program. I'm going to say a little bit more about that in a moment. And then in year two, it's mostly the year two project but it's a big red line because it's a, it's a large project. So it's twice as big as the project that I just showed you. And then in year three, there's another project. So this together comprises the interdisciplinary learning line. And this was also a word I think that you came up with frequently in the word cloud. Um, and then the other larger sections in the program are the major and the minor. The major, you probably already heard this. We have a few choices, the sciences, humanities, and the social sciences, uh, as well as the free major. Uh, Mara, yes, the, the PowerPoint, I'm not sure, but for sure the recording of the presentation you'll be able to review. Um, so that is a, a little bit how kind of in general the three years will be structured. You'll be moving from one focus after the foundation 
uh, to another, which is mostly your main, uh, your major. Um, and then in the in the last year, where we're trying to help you orient yourselves a little bit more towards your future careers, you see that that's where the minor is located. So this could be courses in different faculties uh, here or elsewhere in the Netherlands or even abroad, but it could also be an internship. So where you go and work in an organization or a business or uh, in a research project. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this foundation. And I already mentioned this word, the complex global problems or challenges. And one of these you saw actually in the, um, in the video, how can you reconnect people to, in this case, the North Sea, but you could also say the sea or the environment. Uh, so it's about understanding um, why do we have a disconnect and what are the implications? So you saw also in the video that there are different kinds of research questions that first are about what is this, when we say sea, the word sea, what is that at all? Like not sea with your eyes, but this watery space, what are the different dimensions and how do we as humans relate? And there isn't one answer because people have different relations to the sea depending on their relative location on the globe and their distance to the sea or cultural practices that involve the sea and so forth. So you are slowly discovering all of these layers of the, the problem that sometimes is just like a sentence in a news article. And by doing that, um, we help you realize that it's difficult to find a solution with just one, one discipline, just the one trick pony. And our program is really built to help you kind of gain the skills to solve these, these global challenges well, or, or contribute to solving them step by step. Um, and so um, let me just finish this slide, uh, Nicolas, and then I will get to your raised hand uh, because I, then I can finish my sentence and my thought as well. So these different steps, you can kind of see them here in year one. Uh, the project you see in the middle where it says academic skills and then project collaboration and communication. I think that was very clear in the video as well. And then before that and around that, you see the puzzle pieces that enable you to kind of perform this, this task of doing the project. And uh, an important thing is, of course, it's called challenges to modern society which kind of takes one topic in this uh, uh, year, it's been climate change, and uh, shows you how different disciplines talk about climate change. So when they say climate change, what kind of uh, uh, examples do they use and what kind of truths do they proclaim and what kind of methods do they use? And you will understand that if you, if you bring these people to the table, that maybe they don't come to a res resolution because they don't actually speak the same language. But in our program, we want to help you understand these different languages. And they come from your major program as well. Then you see at the uh, bottom there, the LAS core elective. So once you've signed up for a program and registered for housing, you get first choice uh, um, for these core electives. We have little trailers as well that explain what they're about. But one of these could be, for instance, uh, this is the C, which is a very close relationship to the project as well. And it's a little bit similar to the approach I just mentioned, where you kind of try to understand the sea through the eyes of different professions and different disciplines. Um, there's also a course that is called Love, one of the core electives. I have an overview later of the core electives as well that discusses this concept of love from the perspective of biology, philosophy and psychology. So you see they are like little building blocks that help you realize what different disciplines are, how they're different, and how you can bring them together uh, to discuss these complex problems. Um, and then, and one more thing, and then I get to the raised hand. In the middle, you also see the research skills line, the academic skills, and the introduction to academic research. And I think you could see in the video that you, you are um, kind of practicing with these skills already in the project. So the brainstorming phase that we saw with all of the little post-its and the questions, you can see that there's different kinds of questions that you can ask of a problem in the world. And so you saw things like, what, what are dimensions? So you're describing something. 
or what is our relationship and how do we depend and you you learn that um, in order to answer them you may actually need knowledge of different methods so it's not that we try to teach you everything about statistics or everything about some other method but we try to give you the tools that belong to different disciplines so that you can find answers to a variety of questions so maybe you will do um, interviews or you check sources online or you do a survey and so you practice this a little bit in the project but before you learn about it in academic research and uh, and in academic skills actually as well you learn what what are sources and how you use them i just want to pay attention to the raised hand that now i can't see anymore who it was there was a raised hand if you want to ask your question you can go or you can put a question in the chat i just see the question about powerpoint no nothing then i'll continue with the slides oh you don't know how to open your mic all right you just type your um question otherwise the so for me it, there's a little symbol with a microphone if i click on it sometimes with a little bit of a delay uh, it will open the mic uh, but maybe in your settings it doesn't work but yeah so feel free to type in the chat oh. ah hello nicholas hi um hi. at first my hand was an acting but then you talked about <laughs> the... you decided to have a question yes Go on. <laughs> so can So I think about love and its relationship to I think we lost you. Hello again. Hello again, yeah. Uh, be quick. Where did the audio stop? Pardon? Where did the audio stop? At what part? Oh, right in the beginning. So sorry, I have to repeat the whole thing. Okay, okay, no problem. So I was saying that if you can elaborate a bit more on the love and by. Biology or chemistry, for example. Yeah, so you, you're breaking up again. That was also posted by Mike in the chat. You asked to elaborate on the love course, I think. Um, I can do that, but there are also videos about all of these electives. And I know some of them, they're just being reshot. Um, Marike, are we able to already provide these videos to the students if they're interested? Yes, we can. That's great. So I really would recommend for you to watch them, even though some of them might still change, but they'll give you a good sense of the teachers and uh, also give you some examples of what is addressed in the course. Uh, in addition to that, there's also some information online about these courses, very short descriptions. And um, yeah, Marika says it's best maybe if you can hang on um, just for a few more weeks, then you can get the very brand new uh, updated versions of the videos. And I also want to say that um, we have, um, they're not called open days, but where we have mini lectures. Um, and the love course is often one where there is a mini lecture on site. So that is also a really good opportunity to get a sense of what these courses are like. But uh, yeah, for now, would that be okay for you to uh, to wait for the video and watch them later? Oh, see, there is the a link already that Iris posted. Otherwise, if you're not content with this answer, I'll get back to that at the end again. So um, I'm going to continue with my presentation. 
Um, so methods, sometimes you think uh, are boring, but methods, I mean, this is a science, scientific program and research methods really are a very important part of it. Um, and we, we try to integrate them kind of throughout. So you have the methods courses and they are mentioned here on the screen um, and you are practicing them in the projects. Um, as well as in at the end at the, in, the, in your bachelor thesis. But the reason why I put them all here together on one slide is, and, and I'm really kind of proud about this in our program, is that we offer you the opportunity to take any and all of them. So um, I will talk a little bit more about some of the restrictions that you might face depending on some choices that you're making in the program, but in general, um, we allow you to take courses like statistics um, as well as qualitative data or visual data, which means that you are really um, way ahead in becoming this multiple trick pony that, that uh, employers are really looking for because you are able to understand specific problems from different perspectives. And not only that, you're also able to speak the language that goes with that and you're able to think outside of the box more easily. And so we made some space uh, in that we put all of these courses in the same location in the program. And because the minor space is pretty much clear, it means that you can kind of catch up in this space as well to in order to improve your methods toolbox should you choose to do that. Now about these choices, this is the list of the core electives that you'll be presented with um, right at the beginning of your studies. So as soon as you register, you are able to select one of these in the first block and another one of these in the second block. So we repeat them twice. Um, and all of these courses are to some degree interdisciplinary. Um, that means that they address the topic in different ways and that could be by using different sources. So for instance, culture, I think there is some literature also from neuropsychology in there, not just from the humanities. Disease also discusses uh, things like policy and the social dimension, as well as uh, biology, uh, then how things work. It now says physics in everyday life, but uh, what we've done in that course as well is um, baking because uh, this, as I say, it's not just about physics, but it's also about kind of the sciences in general and uh, how, how the things work that you encounter in your daily life. Um, how high is the chance that you get your first choice? That is a really good question. Well, since you can, you, since we have uh, every course twice, it means that in total there are 50 seats. So I'm going to make this a little bit a uh, complicated answer. And usually we have about uh, up to 150 students. So that means that there is a one third chance, if this is statistically correct, that you're uh, uh, located. Usually this kind of divides quite well. So um, most of the students, I would say, get their first shot chance. I, I honestly couldn't say how high the chance is that you'll get your first choice, but it, it's it's pretty good. And all of these courses, I think, really are super interesting. And Nicolas has another question. Whilst he is formulating his question, I'm going to let you think about workload. <laughs> Yeah, at the moment, um, they are they won't be the same like forever, but they will for sure be the same still next year. If you're a student who's thinking about coming in the year after next, it might be good to double check our, our program um, because there may be some changes. 2023. Um, well, it is let me say it like this, it is very likely that most of these courses will still be in the program then, <laughs> just because they're great courses. But do check in um, with us because sometimes you have changes also in staff, people go away, uh, sometimes courses can be replaced. So I have to be honest about that too. 
I'm not seeing uh, Nicolas' question yet, so I'm just going to continue with the workload. Um, I think it's important for you to know that when you start studying with us or anywhere, that it's basically like having a job. So full time means 40 hours per week. Uh, so, and not all of this is on campus, although we have a really great location and many students choose to be there almost around the clock because they work there together, they're, we have a kitchen and they cook together. In fact, last Friday we had this gnocchi and tiramisu making event that I joined as well. And the tables that you normally work on, we had mashed potatoes and raw eggs and flour to make the gnocchi. And we had an Italian student who was telling us about the history of gnocchi. Um, but yeah, really it's 40 hours a week. So you need to uh, think about how you plan your time. And also, um, you know, when you when you uh, take on a sports or hobby, which of course you're encouraged to do because it's important for your overall well-being, it does mean that sometimes you will you will work on your studies, like do some reading or work on assignments in the weekends or in the evening. Um, so just for you to be aware of it. Um, and the um, the type of assignments is quite varied. So it means that some sometimes hopefully it won't feel as so much work because you're working on this fun uh, artistic output that could be creative writing or a video or news report or something like that. I see Nicolas' uh, hand is up again. Did you want to ask a question? Because I'm still not hearing it. If you have problems with um yeah you can't open the mic yeah can you just put it in the chat then i will see it as well sorry about that oh you can't huh? the icon for the microphone um well it's for me it's right underneath the powerpoint but if it's gone you might experience technical problems and then you're going to have to um, use the chat to type your question yeah, so now we're getting to the choices. Um, because the good thing is that if you're choosing things that are fun, the work week, week will also seem uh, shorter than it actually is. And these are some of the choices. So I have already mentioned we have the three majors and I mentioned that they are also important puzzle pieces in the program in that even in interdisciplinary communication, you need to have some sort of grounding in um, a discipline so you are an expert as well as a generalist in a way and so we have the humanities the sciences and the social sciences as well as the free major and what you can see in this slide is that for each of these uh, majors there's also specializations and it means that they are kind of a package of courses that were pre-selected that form a kind of opportunity for you for your personal or career development. And some of these are more explicitly interdisciplinary than others. So that, for instance, in the sciences, the mind, machine and morality really is the combination between what you see in a smart technology. So you have some programming courses and artificial intelligence and some lab work, but there's also uh, ethics and some of the humanities courses in that same specialization. Whilst in the social sciences, a program like mind and behavior is really a specialization that is what the word says. It specializes you a little bit more in psychology and uh, provides a, quite a good fit to um, a kind of standard psychology master's program. Um, but I also want to emphasize that it's not a guarantee so we have multiple academic advisors and once you start thinking about where do you want to go after ucg it's always a good idea to check on your transcript and discuss um, with the ac academic advisors um, what their suggestions are in terms of where you might want to focus uh so, oh so the, for the major it's not exactly the same um question anna I think the question before was the uh, electives. Oh, hang on. I might have missed on this question. So for the major, that's not a problem. So we don't have limitations uh, on the majors. We do have limitations on some of the courses. 
So it means that when you register for courses that are compulsory, um, and if you register for a specific major and specialization, you can have priority seating um, because our courses are small scale teaching. So we have 25, sometimes up to 32 seats. Um, but what it means that if we see that a lot of students want to take the same course, uh, we look for uh, ways to, to add a course. So Anna, if you want to do a course in um, biopsychology, which is very, very popular, uh, then it's quite likely that we'll try and add additional groups or we'll allow you to take this course still later. So you take another course and then you take this course later on. I'm going to check in the chat again. Uh, there's a specific place for entrepreneurship on campus. Uh, that is correct. There's a center for entrepreneurship. Um, and in our program, um, you can encounter this already if you choose a specialization that is, uh, let me just go back in the slide again, that is the, uh, in the social sciences, the international business and entrepreneurship. So you see it there in the title as well. And there are some courses that are taught by colleagues from the Entrepreneurship Center. And they also offer things like venture labs, um, so where you have kind of a weekend program to develop some business ideas and so forth. And there's also information about this on the website. So um, maybe Marike and Iris, if you would be so kind and post the link in the chat for Nicolas, then you can, uh, after this, find some information. In the first year, uh i would have to quickly check the program or or iris and marike um on our website on the education website there is a link uh, to the uh, course program online and it has all of the courses for the first year maybe you can post that link as well and then uh, we can have a quick look and see which courses are about entrepreneurship um, and I will get to this after the presentation. So I will have a look at the list with you. Thanks. I already see one of the links uh, here to the Center for Entrepreneurship. So, um, oh, sorry. Now I'm going too fast. The, I want to make one point, and I said this before as well. So we have a lot of choices, and um, and there's a lot of different kinds of students. So some of you really want to take advantage of uh, the full breadth of the courses that we can offer. And those students will likely want to do a free major. So you can basically take any course that you want. Um, and then in the middle, you see the major, which means that you have a disciplinary home. So you will be the science students or the humanities student or the social science student. But you still have a lot of choice because all of our majors have um, also in the second year at least two uh, kind of course spaces that are free. So even if you did the sciences, you could still take courses in philosophy, for instance. And then the specialization is the most narrow. So you will find that that is the place where we have the most um, compulsory courses as well. Um, and some students really appreciate that because they, they like to kind of know um, that they want to develop themselves academically in a specific way, and then they can print out this list and put it above their bed and know exactly where they're going. Uh, so we, we have uh, all of these options um, for you at UCG. I'm just going to skip this slide now. But it also means that you will come up with a lot of questions and concerns. And I have some of these on this slide. Some of them can relate to uh, you came into UCG thinking that you wanted to study, um, I don't know, social sciences. But then you start uh, looking into these smart technology courses, and there's a lot of information in the media about how this will be a great kind of career path in the future. And you're starting to think about maybe I should switch. And um, there could also be some other things that come across your path or combinations that you want to do or specific learning opportunities that you're looking for, like uh, it has here at the bottom left, you want to work on real world, world problems and gain experience in team and project work, or you want to work in a business. And uh, I already mentioned our guidance team. We have uh, four people in total, the personal support advisor and the academic advisors, and they are there uh, exclusively for the purpose of helping you with questions like that and other 
uh, personal questions so that you can navigate through these choices throughout your three years. I'm just going to have a quick look in the chat again because I can hear it bleeping. Uh, I see that um, Marika already answered the question about the level courses. Uh, so it says thousands, we have 100, 200, 300 level courses. And Tessa has a question, can you choose a free major on topics that are different than the ones that are mentioned here? So I'm interested in criminology related topics. Would it be possible to do a free major on this? Well, that would be a yes and no question because we don't offer ourselves uh, many courses in criminology. Um, in fact, I think there is a course on criminal law that we have, and maybe, I don't know, war, because that is actually someone from the law faculty who has a background in criminology could count for that as well. So in your case, you probably would sit down with the academic advisor and look for the interesting courses that relate to what do you need as a criminologist. So are you going to be a forensic, is it forensic? criminologist, so you might actually want to do some of these biology courses or lab courses, as well as some courses in psychology. So cognitive psychology, I think, would be a really interesting course for you, but also neurobiology, even a course in disease. And then you would look at where, where do I have choice options? So we offer um, in the second year um, the opportunity to take two courses outside of UCG. So then you would maybe look in other faculties, Tessa, and you have the minor, which is a pretty big space of 30 EC, where you can also choose any courses outside of uh, UCG to kind of bulk up on your specific interest. And then you can call it a free major. Martin, how would you compare UCG to the UC in Rotterdam and Maastricht? Well, some UCs have a specific focus, Martin, and I know that Maastricht UC is uh, organized kind of entirely around problem-based learning. So that is, I think, their theme. And Erasmus, um, I was looking at that recently. I'm not sure if it's like global problems or so some have kind of more themes. And I apologize, but I would have to look this up Martin, what the particular theme is uh, in UC. So, so that is in terms of theme or approach that can be different. And in uh, at UCG, um, we have this project learning line. So I gave you the example, the video of the project, and then the second year project is more research oriented. And then the third year project uh, is a kind of a leadership where you come up with your own idea or you work with external stakeholders. For instance, I'm supervising a third year project now where we are trying to um, look at how can, how can we um, provide training for people working at the university experiencing harassment. So that involves a bit of literature review and uh, undertaking a survey and observing the training but also kind of working with external stakeholders in martial arts who is giving the training. Um, so that's that's the bit of leadership that you're kind of looking outside. So the project learning line, I think, is quite specific to UCG. And I think that I'm not sure if other UCGs also have a free major, but we definitely have a lot of choices in terms of building your own program here. Uh, I hope that was useful, Martin. Otherwise check back in uh, later on. I'm going to go back to my presentation. Um, I might skip a few slides. I have some, I assembled some photographs to give you a little bit of a sense of kind of the atmosphere and the kind of teaching. I mentioned this already before when I talked about the popular biopsychology class and how we have multiple groups. And that is because we have small groups of 25 students. Uh, I think it's also important to mention that unlike some other faculties where you have 150 students or 500 students in one um, room, we don't really do traditional lectures. So you won't see a lot like what I'm doing now, actually just like talking and you're listening. 
um, but mostly we expect students to come prepared to bring something to have some sort of role in your learning so it's very interactive and very experiential i think also like the example showed uh, of the project and so here's some pictures uh, you saw them already in the first slide of what the teaching looks like in the classroom um, you also see a picture of how we did this during the pandemic where we have spaced uh, seating and a face mask in that picture on the right um, that is me with a guest lecturer who is a person uh, with a physical impairment so he's in a wheelchair and has muscle spasms and we were discussing with students the topic of the inclusive city and so i, I invited uh, my friend leon um, to help us understand what it, not just what it what it is in terms of theory but also what it what it means if you have this disability and what it means to kind of not be included and not belong in, in spaces that we find kind of common and then this is one that is also occurring in the las core electives uh, in people, place and culture, and this is the C. We uh, pull the groups together and there's a, a field day on the island of Schermonnik Oog. And we take the students out in the field and they uh, carry out some field work and it can be physical field work. So they'll take some core samples or it will be something about waste uh, in oceans. Or uh, I think there's also a kind of more of a social science project going on here. So it's not just in the classroom. Uh, that we have. This is again uh, examples of where we connect UCG with outside stakeholders. So there was a, a project figuring out how to make science more interesting for primary school children and especially girls. So that's the picture here on the left where students, this was a first year project as well where they were doing a programming, like programming an, a guitar with girls uh, and the prototype was for them to, to try out the workshop and the one on the right is where we're working with people uh, with physical impairments um, on the inclusive city. Um, there's a, a few more slides still to go, <laughs> um, but not so many. And then what I really like as well is that there's quite a few teachers who will really try and give you opportunities to, <laughs> uh, well, at the risk of bringing up these ponies again, but to to be a sh almost a show pony because you're learning some great things and you're also able to show some great things. So this example about working on the inclusive city, um, we went with students to a conference in Ireland in Maynooth. It was the Irish uh, conference of geographers, and this is not a student conference; it's for uh, senior researchers working in geography. And you see here that someone put um, a message on Twitter, undergraduate students presenting their work and art from the breakout project. Very impressive. So that could be you. Um, other teachers do other things. But I think my point is that we, we see a lot of potential and we really try and give you opportunities. Um, I'm going to have a few more pictures in a moment, a little bit more about the community. Um, I already talked about your work week, so think about having a job. I also talked about the assessment, which sometimes means that you can have the feeling that actually you're not working so many hours because they are quite varied. So it's not just essay writing, it's not multiple choice. It could also be an artwork or it could be a blog, um, it could be a critical reflection. So there's all these different ways in which we are trying to find out what you know and to, to um, I guess, allow you to show what you know for grade, of course. I'm going to skip this again. Then the last few pictures, there's two more. And then the last slide just says any questions. Um, so um, what I want to emphasize is that another thing that I really appreciate about UCG is the collaboration between students and, and teachers. So this happens not just in when you're working together in a project, but it also happens like here in the kitchen. Uh, I just mentioned the cooking workshop, um, but there's also a lot of um, really, really engaged uh, student associations. And one of them is uh, Civitas. And before the pandemic, um, we had a pop-up cafe to raise money for an organization called Just a Drop. 
And so Civitas is kind of facilitating this. And in this case, um, it was with um, with myself. And um, there's my daughter in the blue dress in the bottom left picture and some of her friends. And we had this bake sale, which was like a pop-up cafe. And I think we, we uh, raised almost 400 euros. Um, and another example that is kind of between organized with teachers and students is also this resilience and martial arts training where we offer uh, free spots for our students to develop these skills outside of the um, classroom. And um, these, yeah, you're hungry. Well, they are all homemade and sometimes we make them together. Um, yeah, anyway, so where we pick up some topics that are important to students and try to think about what can we do with them uh, to to learn something, but also to collaborate and learn something um, together. Uh, so I don't have a picture of that now, but I think they're on the website as well, the resilience workshop. Uh, we've had a pandemic for two years, but uh, now students are picking up these things again. And I think kind of shared sports activities are on the program as well, as well as more of these cooking things. So I've kept you for an hour, but to be fair, you also uh, managed to ask some questions. I'm just going to have a quick look in the chat again, because I saw a question coming up. Uh, Nicolas, can I work in between semesters starting from year one? or find a job through UCG? Uh, that's a really good question because it ties into what I just talked about in relation to the study workload. So in between the semesters, so the largest period of time that you have is really the summer break. So the, the end of the academic year, uh, summer in June, and then up till the beginning of the next academic year, the beginning of September is the longest period where you have uh, no classes if you don't have any resets. So that is where you can work. And But we do have also students who have a work, uh, who have a, a job kind of in, uh, for instance, working for a cafe or we have a lot of bike delivery. Uh, so there's a lot of students who work for these uh, food delivery uh, places. Um, we've had students who work in the international school as assistant teachers. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, depending a little bit on what your nationality is because of the law. Um, but it will, it will mean that you have to just plan your uh, weekly schedule well. So you need to check when are your deadlines and your assignments uh, and adjust your work schedule so that you don't get into um, trouble. There's also jobs through UCG. It's a good question as well. Those are student assistantships. They are not often for year one students, but we have a lot of students uh, who are older year students in um, various capacities, for instance, supporting the online learning environment. So it's a little bit more technical. We've had students um, helping to teach in statistics or calculus. Some of the content students, when you're even older year students, you can help with some of the uh, kind of maybe some of the assessment even or uh, facilitating workshops. We've had second year students who were facilitating year one workshops all by themselves this year. Uh, and so they got paid for that as well. There's a lot of different um, possibilities, I think. Campus tours. Yes, Iris already responded to that. Uh, how many places are still available? I don't know how many are still available. Uh, Marika, do you know that? I think we have about 150 in total, but how many are already gone? Marika, Iris, help. Uh, Mara, should I reach out to the student buddy or somewhere else? We have student mentors. I don't know if that's what you mean, Mara. Oh, I yeah. Uh, feel free to reach out via UCG. Okay, this is before you come to UCG. When you're at UCG, you will have uh, student mentors in year one who help you with everything live in Groningen, I think. Tessa, masters have limited amount of places. That's a very good question. Would people with this bachelor be considered good candidates for specific masters? I want to say yes. So I don't know how specific you're thinking, but the best that you could do, I think, is to check the uh, criteria that you can find on the website. 
the entry requirements for a master's. And so some masters have specific courses that you need. So for instance, there's a few masters program who have specific methods requirements. So you will have to have statistics one, two, and three, for instance, or you will have to have um, an undergraduate degree in the social sciences. So, um, and some of them have, uh, so we have currently an agreement between the Faculty of Science, uh, their pharmaceutical program, and our program, where we look at what are the possible gaps that students have. And we use this for our academic advisors to advise students which courses they should take, for instance, in the minor space. So that's the 30 EC. And then there's something that's called, I can't even remember it, ph pharma, I'm just going to check it. It's a complicated something medical term. Uh, and we noticed that students really need this course for the very specific uh, master's program in pharmacology. And so we discover this kind of gap and make sure that we can integrate it in our program as an elective. Uh, so that is an example of a very specific requirement. But I also want to say that from the feedback that we've had from at least faculties at our university, that because you are not this one trick pony, that master's programs really appreciate our students because you do think outside of the box and you usually want to go the extra mile to do the additional reading, to read up on something that you may be missing uh, to fill those gaps. So, you know, that might be a little bit around the corner answer, but I think it's, um, it's a realistic scenario. I can hear more bleeps in the chat. But now I really want to know what this uh, this course is called because of the specialist um, question. Okay, it's called pharmacoepidemiology. So if you're interested in that, Tessa, you can take this course at UCG. Um, yeah, another question about how many spots. Seats are going fast. We still have spots left. That is an answer like I would give it. It's unspecific, but it's an answer. Um, yeah, I don't think I see any more questions. I will still be here. We can also formally say um, thanks and goodbye, and I can hang out here still if someone wants to open up their microphone and switch on their camera and ask some more questions. If you have any more questions about examples that I could give from courses within the limits of what I know, I would also be happy to um, answer them. I didn't miss any questions in the chat, right? Yes, Micah? Someone wants a recipe maybe for something they saw on screen? Oh, here is a question. There's an intro week. Yes, the intro week, there's actually two intro weeks, I think. There's the intro week that is organized by the student organization. And then, yes, Marike, exactly. The, sec the other one is the academic intro week. So that is actually the beginning of the academic year. And it means that you already follow some of these classes that I showed you earlier, um, the uh, Exploring Challenges of Modern Society and Academic Skills and the LAS Core Elective. But there's also a program to help you adjust to living in Groningen and to um, studying at UCG. So that is mostly organized by our academic advisors and personal support advisor. Should be after your vacation. That is a Sunday. Oh my, Marike. Well, we're not teaching on a Sunday, as far as I know. <laughs> 29th. And that's the day before my birthday. And sometimes I bring brownies on my birthday. Uh, MA, is it known when students are ready, already able to move into the... That is a question Marie Kippen. Oh, there you go. Can answer. And she does. <laughs> that is a Monday. <laughs> Yeah, Timo, I think that depends on the size and the location. 
I don't know if we, yep, Marika, we are such a good team. I was going to say Marika can give you an average. In June? No. Yeah, Mar oh, is it, Marika, is that about the fridge or the Kairos? Yeah, no, that's not in June. It should be, I think, just before the academic uh, intro week. And yeah, and interestingly enough, I think last year they also went to Sri Monaco just because it's a great island. And the picture here is also from Sri Monaco. Do we have any more questions? You're very welcome. Mail, thanks you all for showing up, and I hope to see you on site. There are fridges though in the like general kitchen. Yeah, common kitchen area. And I think the bathrooms are also shared per unit. So the units I think are differently sized as well. I don't know exactly what the range is, but maybe Marika can speak to that. Lotte is also a good quest question. Marika probably can speak to it. I think they're, yeah, I was going to say, I think they are mixed. <laughs> 